What's up everybody? My name is Brad and today I've got another book review for you guys. I'm not sure how much of a review it's actually going to be, uh, but I'm going to be talking about Kitchen Confidential Adventures in the Culinary Underbelly by Anthony Bourdain. I listened to this on audiobook. Um, I checked it out through my library app and I'm going to talk a little bit about the book, um, but I'm going to be talking about Anthony Bourdain himself and his television shows and his love for food and my love for food and things like that. I'll read the really brief synopsis real quick and then we'll get into the rest of the video. A, del a deliciously funny, delectably shocking banquet of wild but true tales of life in the culinary trade from chef Anthony Bourdain. Laying out more than his quarter of a century of drugs, sex, and hot cuisine, now with all new, never before published material. Uh, so I wanted to read this uh, because Anthony Bourdain, he was probably my favorite travel slash food personality on TV. Um, his show, No Reservations, I watched every time it came on. I've seen every episode. It's a show I could watch the episodes over and over again. Uh, same with his, his last show, uh, Parts Unknown on CNN. I had seen every episode. It's a show I could watch over and over again. Um, just Anthony Bourdain himself, I loved his personality. Um, I loved, he seemed super down to earth and chill and, you know, just could talk to whoever um, about travel and food and people's customs and uh, their beliefs and all kinds of stuff. And you could really tell he had a passion for food and for travel and for learning and exploring and stuff. And I just really uh, like those aspects of him that came through on his shows. Uh, me, myself, I've always loved food. Um, I'm the one who cooks in our house. You know, I, my wife bakes every now and then, uh, but as far as our meals, I'm the one who cooks all our meals. I'm the one that picks out, you know, what we get at the grocery store and all that kind of stuff. And I've had a love for food from a really young age. Um, way back in the day, I don't know how old I was, maybe three or four, you know, I'd watch here in Kentucky, we had a channel called KET. I don't think it exists anymore, I'm not sure. Uh, but it was all PBS programming like Sesame Street, Reading Rainbow, and that kind of stuff. So I'd watch those shows, and there was another show called The Frugal Gourmet that came on there. And I remember watching that, you know, in between Sesame Street and Reading Rainbow, and I was just fascinated uh, with this guy cooking on television. And for some reason, I thought of this show uh, like a month or so ago and looked it up on YouTube, and there are clips of the show on there. Uh, so from a very early age, you know, I was already interested in watching people cook, you know, watching the frugal gourmet. And when I get got older, um, probably really early, you know, 12, 13 or so, um, I started learning to cook for myself. Um, it's not that we didn't have, you know, my mom cooked meals all the time, uh, but it was your normal, you know, stuff like meatloaf, you know, hamburger, spaghetti, you know, taco night, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I was watching, I would watch Food Network and watch all these more you know, exotic type things that they would cook. And I would just wanted to, I wanted to eat that stuff. So the only way that I felt that I was going to be able to eat that stuff was if I cooked it myself and ate it. So I've been cooking pretty early on um, and, you know, wasn't really taught by anybody. You know, I'd watch the cooking shows and read the recipes. Uh, but really I'm all self-taught, you know, trial and error and, learning from your mistakes and just continually cooking and practicing and learning new things, learning new techniques, new recipes and so on. Uh, so I have a passion for cooking myself. I love to cook. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to read this uh, because Anthony Bourdain also obviously had a passion for cooking. And one of his um, big beliefs, uh, he touched on it a little bit in the book, uh, but that food is really, if you really think about it, uh, food or the love of eating is really the only thing uh, for the most part that everyone has in common. You know, I know there are people that are starving and don't have access to food, uh, but everyone likes to eat. You know, you know, people can disagree on religion or politics or, you know, different social economic classes and, you know, all kinds of different stuff. But food is the one thing that everyone has in common. Everyone likes to eat, and everyone likes to eat a good meal. And that was sort of Anthony Bourdain's, you know, belief or whatever, that everyone can come together 
over food regardless of you know your different you know your race your sexual orientation your religious beliefs political views you know whatever it may be your cultural differences we can all come together over food sit down and have a meal together learn about each other's cultures through food have conversations over food and it's just the one sort of unifying thing that everyone can come together on and i really like that that idea that concept uh, that food really is the one thing that can bind everyone together you know not everyone likes movies not everyone likes books you know people don't agree on political stuff people are religious some people are not religious but food is the one thing that sort of binds everyone together and like i said i really liked that concept um, the book um, it's it's sort of anthony bourdain's um, autobiography if you will you know goes through um, when he was a young kid and he was sort of picky growing up you know and he talks about a trip that him and his parents took to France I believe or somewhere in Europe and everywhere they would go he, he would order a hamburger and french fries hamburger and french fries and he talks about his very first true food experience uh, if I remember correctly they were on a cruise and they served him soup and he took a bite of the soup and it was a cold soup and it just completely caught him off guard it shocked him it wasn't anything like he'd ever had before or expected and that sort of um, awoke this uh, love of food within him that was his first true food experience and from there um, he went on to eating mussels in France and he was talked about the butter he didn't like the butter because it smelled funny because it was it was real butter instead of margarine you buy at the grocery store um, he ended up loving that and uh, drinking wine and eating all these sort of throwaway garbage fish that most people threw away that he loved and that was sort of his spark for loving food and it goes on to talk about you know his first jobs in, in restaurants and how he was thought he was hot stuff when he wasn't um, he went to the CIA the Culinary Institute of America graduated from there it talks about him working in the the rainbow room and various other restaurants uh, sort of you know his his downfall if you will uh, sort of slumming along working at different small you know restaurants that would just go under after a while um, talks about him getting his first chef gig and how he ran his kitchens and his everyday planning his sous chefs a lot of important people he talks about in his life and i just found the whole thing uh, fascinating and very interesting i did listen to the audiobook and it is narrated by anthony bourdain and i don't think it would have come across as well with anyone else narrating and I can't picture anyone else doing this other than him you know listening to his own words and his own voice and it felt like he was telling you a story more so than him reading the book to you uh, but overall I, I really loved it you know his passion for food um, his passion for travel comes across in here again with his early years in France and later on it talks about him going to Japan uh, for work he was going to one of the restaurants he worked in to in Japan to teach them how to make American or French style food and he goes into exploring the streets of the Japan of Japan and going to these you know noodle bars and ramen bars and sushi bars and that's something I really loved about him was um, not only his love for food but the love and the infusion of the culture where the food came from um, also, it was something he really loved. And that's something I like as well, learning about other cultures uh, through the food they eat and me learning to eat that food. You know, I'm not a picky eater at all. Um, I'll try anything once and really if I had to think about it, I can't even think of anything off the top of my head that I don't like. You know, I, just, I can't think of anything. I, I love food. I'll eat everything and I'll try anything once and I really like trying different foods I've never had before or never heard of before um, especially from different cultures around the world uh, that's a great way to learn about other cultures and other peoples and that kind of stuff um, there is one part I wanted to talk about really quick um, that was sort of haunting while listening to it uh, for those that don't know Anthony Bourdain he actually committed suicide a few years ago um, he hung himself supposedly and there was one part in the book where um, he was talking about one of his other chef friends and they had fired one of the sous chefs and that sous chef had actually killed himself because he got fired he hung himself and the chef that fired him he felt really bad for it and Bourdain was talking about you know he shouldn't feel bad you know it wasn't his fault 
you know, the guy was bringing their kitchen down, wasn't doing what he was supposed to do, so he had to let him go. And he was talking about how, you know, this lifestyle that he lives, this, this culinary lifestyle, it's sort of cutthroat and only the strong survive. You know, it's not for everybody. They work super long hours and just the intense heat of the kitchen, it's nonstop and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, basically cut out the weakest link. And he was talking about, you know, what he was basically calling the guy weak for killing himself because uh, he couldn't cut it in the restaurant industry and stuff. And it was just sort of haunting to hear him talk about that and how only the strong survive and that stuff. And then come to find out, I think this was published in 2007, I want to say. And I think he killed himself in 2018. So about a decade later, you know, from him talking about that to what he ended up doing the same thing to himself and him listening to me, listening to it in his own words and his own voice was sort of, creepy and haunting and chilling, um, knowing what actually ended up happening to Bourdain. Um, you know, very similar situation. You know, we never know what someone is actually thinking, what's going on in their head, you know, what issues they might be having, despite what, you know, the facade is on the outside, whether they look super happy and, you know, good with life and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's sort of a, a down moment for the video, sort of a somber moment. But just something that stood out to me, it was sort of haunting listening to him talk about another chef that had committed suicide and how he was like so against it and then he ended up doing it to himself. But not to end on a down note, um, if you love food, if you love cooking, if you're interested in travel, um, if you like Anthony Bourdain himself um, or interested in the restaurant industry, the sort of behind the scenes, um, this was a fascinating read. I, I really loved it. I gave it a solid five stars. Um, I couldn't have been happier with it. I'm definitely going to check out his other books that he has written as well. Um, I just, I loved everything about it. Loved the experience. Loved, loved hearing him talk about his experiences. Um, it was funny and, you know, he's super funny and just all the stuff he's learned and the experiences that he was able to translate over. It was just a really fun experience to listen to all that. Plus, you know, the love of food and travel and all that stuff on top of it. Uh, but I probably rambled on too long. Uh, again, this was uh, Kitchen Confidential Adventures in the Culinary Underbelly by Anthony Bourdain. It was a solid five-star read for me. And again, if you're interested in restaurants and food and all that kind of stuff, I highly suggest you check this out. Uh, well, that's all I have for you guys today. So thanks for spending your time with me. Again, my name is Brad, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye.